Yo, 2.3 was the reason why I finally decided to cop the MPC Live. The reason why, auto sample. Now this gave you the capability to auto sample your VST along with your external synthesizers and any outboard gear you're using. So, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to auto sample your VSTs coming right up. What's up? This is the Kingo Caesar, bringing you unboxings, tech reviews, and tutorials just like this one. So if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and then hit the whoa so your kids think you're cool, just like I think you're cool for hitting the notification bell to let you know when my videos are posting. Without further ado, let's dive into the content. <laughs> Okay guys, we're back with the NPC and I'm gonna give you guys a brief example of what I mean by how powerful and how great this thing is to auto sample like your VSTs. So I have the complete ultimate uh, bundle, the 12 edition, so complete 12, whatever. You know what I'm saying, I got complete 12 ultimate. So I've auto sampled some of my um, instruments from contact. So right here we have the Alicia Keys Now we got some brass. Now we got some brass staccato. Dark lead. This is like a pluck. <laughs> I mean, it just keeps going on. We got an Indian flute. You guys forgive my plan. I'm just messing around just to show y'all what I'm talking about. So now that's all the ones that I loaded up, but I have so much more. What you guys don't understand is that this is powerful and you can go in there and you can do this manually. There's great videos out there that will show you how to do this in detail. I will link those at the top or at the bottom in the description. But one is from my buddy Matthew Stratton. He has a great video on key groups and how to set them up another one is tube digger who really goes into detail as well to show you how to manually set these up if you want to but I don't see what the need is to do that anymore now that you can do auto sampling because it basically does everything that they will teach you in those videos on its own automatically but I guess if you really want to get in there and fine tweak some stuff and make it like that much more better, then it would be good to know that stuff. So I'm still going to link those videos either, like I said, up the top or down in the bottom in the description. So check those videos out if you're one of those guys that really need to do that because those videos are great and they have a lot of good information in them. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to auto sample your VSTs. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go down to menu and you're going to hit the menu button. Then you're going to go down to the sampler. So you see this little thing, it looks like a record right here. You're going to hit that. Now up here at the top, there's like a little piano. If you can see it right up here, you're going to hit that. That's going to get you to your auto sample functionality within the MPC Live or the MPC X because MPC X does this too. So now that we're here, it shows that we have track two. It has uh, the plugin name. Now, if you was doing the external synthesizer or something right here, it will show you where it would record from. Right now, we have it set to one on one and two 
or input one and two but we're not going to be worried about that because we're sampling straight from a VST so now the only things we're going to worry about is the note range so now we have a, I have my note set up from C2 to C4 to me that's a pretty good note range I mean you can play with this to see if you want to go further down the spectrum or higher up the spectrum if you want to which what I mean spectrum is octaves because this is basically your octave range so um, I usually have this set on three Yo, I'm editing a video right now and I just had to stop to to cut this part because I explained that so bad okay so like uh, we don't go back to the auto sampler or whatnot but like what I meant right here, I'll put that on three, I had that on three, okay? So you set this to three, okay, for each layer. So if you went to layer two, if you added another layer, then you would take that up to six, okay? And you would do that because you're adding another layer. But the only reason you would add another layer is like if you had a, um, if you had like a, a plug-in or something that made like a different noise when you press the keys harder. So like if it just makes the same sound when you press the key, no matter how hard you press it, then you just do one layer. You don't need two layers. But if it's a multi-sound or multi-timbral, um, you know, VST, then you would use use like uh, different layers and then you would up the note stride. OK, and I'll give you an example of, of, of something like that. So like I have these West Africa, I have these West African drums up. And like you can hear like when I hit when I hit that drum like that, I hit it soft, it's like that. When I hit it harder, it makes like a more pronounced sound. You get what I'm saying. That's what I was trying to say. So back to the regular footage. I'm just playing guys, I'm still here. <laughs> so what I forgot to add this time is that like when you're when you're working with layers you want to make sure that you're adjusting your your uh, velocity value too to match up with your VST so when you when you do hit uh, hit the keys soft that you trigger the one sound and then once you trigger the higher velocity which is probably which is going to be your higher value that it, it does make the the extra sound or the more pronounced, you know what I'm saying, sound of the of the VST. So that's what I left out. This is your note length. So how how long you want the uh how however long you want the MPC to sample the sound. So right now I have mine set up for um, three thousand milliseconds because I want this to kind of be like a longer sample. If it wasn't a long sample, if it was something like a pluck, then you could set that at like a lower note length and it would it would be just fine because a pluck is just you know it's just it's a quick sound so you don't really need to have like a a, a long it doesn't need to sample it that long okay so the tail just tells how much you want to leave off at the end so when you're done hitting the key how much you want it to to leave at the end before it goes to the next sample now right here is where you can name your sample. So this sample is called, so this pad is called the Navigator. I basically name them the same thing and then put what they are at the end. So the name of this VST is the Analog Dreams, but the name of the uh, actual preset is the navigator so I put navigator and then pad and I'm gonna do it that way this helps you with a little bit of organization so when you're putting them in files or you're trying to like structure them so you know what what is what if you put that at the end of it then you'll know which folder to put it in or you'll know exactly what it is when you're looking for it so so now you got your enable looping. Basically, you can set it to to uh, sample it forward, or you can have it sample it reverse, or you can have it alternating. You know, however you want to do it. For this one, we're just gonna leave it at forward. 
uh, loop start it just tells it when you want them to start the loop at what time you want to and then loop and tells them like where you want to end the loop okay I just leave this the same equal power I don't know what that does I haven't tried to change it and auto trim is all it's also selected I'll, I just leave I always leave that selected now you have the choice to make this you have a choice to make this the current program when you do it I always hit yes so I always check that so when I'm done it's gonna make this this uh, key group the main the current program is going to change it from a plug-in to the to the actual key group that I sample okay and then it shows you how long it's going to be so 32 seconds is how long it's going to take them to sample this so what we're going to do is we're going to do it Now you hear the MPC sampling or auto sampling the uh, VST straight from your computer, which is dope, man. I know y'all hear that. Okay, guys, so now. It has now changed it from a plug-in to a key group as you can see. Now we have we have our pad <laughs> or we have our new pad as a new key group, but it still doesn't sound it doesn't sound great because when I when I hit the key, it goes in there and it just stops as soon as I'm done. So I'm gonna show you how to make this sound better. We're going to go to menu, then we're going to go to program edit, then we're going to go up here where it says key group, there's a little piano right here, and then next to it it says key group and it says number one. We're going to click that, and we're going to change that to all, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the filter envelope, and we're going to go right here at the bottom where it says uh, amp envelope and we're gonna go to the release now I usually try to cut this up to like around 100 now when I hit the key it has like a little it has like a little delay or before before it stops the sound and you can make this tighter see how I'm, I'm hitting the key and then it's making that sounds good right there so Okay, so I got it at 83. That gives it like a little bit more. Versus this when it was at zero. So I would just play I would just play with that. It's the amp envelope right here. That's the only thing I really mess with. And I got it at 83. And you get I hope you guys can hear the difference. That sounds so much better. All right. So now, the last thing you would do is you would go down to this little pencil on the side right here of the track. You would hit that pencil, and then you would go save current program. Okay? And then you will find where you have your program saved. And then if you named it in the... Um, while you were while you were sampling it, it should all it should already bring up the name that you have for it. So then the only thing you're gonna do is find that folder that you have your programs in and you're gonna go save. And just like that, you just sampled your first VST out of your computer. Now you can't tell me that that is not dope as F. And I wanted to say the real word, but this is a family, a family kid channel, so I can't do it. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we did it okay guys I hope you guys like my video on auto sampling the reason why this is powerful because this gives you the power to harness any VST that you love 
in your NPC Live and take it with you on the go. I think that's a dope feature. Just a disclaimer, your key groups won't sound exactly how they do when you're using your VST and your DAW, but you can get very close. I mean, the way that they sound is great. If you have great sounding VSTs, then you're gonna get a really great sounding key group that you can, that you can use in your NPC and standalone mode. Like I said, you can also go in there and tweak a lot of parameters. So it does make sense for you guys to go and watch those videos that I talked about earlier in there if you wanna know exactly how key groups work and how to further enhance them. Like I said, I will link those videos either up top or in the comments section or the description below. <laughs> Just a little question of the day for you guys. How is this gonna help your NPC flow? I know it helped mine, but let me know in the comment section below if you guys have already been using this or if this is something that you're gonna use and let me know how it affects your NPC workflow. Now this was just sampling VSTs. I'm gonna have a part two to this video coming out pretty soon and it's gonna be how to auto sample your external synthesizers and, and things like that. So stay tuned for that. Okay guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you liked it, please remember to smash the like button because that helps YouTube's algorithm like me too. And thank you. Thank you guys for watching and holding it down with me today. You guys have a wonderful and blessed day. Old Caesar out.